Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch, and today we're going to look at an interesting free and open source 3D game engine called Nunu Studio. And we're going to start things off with just going straight out hands-on with this guy, and then we'll get into some of the more specific details. But you can see the editor in front of you, pretty straightforward in concept. The way the scenes work, it's a whole lot like uh, Godot in many ways, but you got this, oops, did not mean to drag that. I also didn't mean to parent that to a particle system, but I did. Here you can see, you got 3D objects placed in the scenes. Uh, we've got this guy here, got animations on him. Uh, you got standard manipulator so you can move things around in the scene. Uh, you've got real-time preview with graphical effects of the uh, camera in the world environment. And I'm going to go ahead and we'll quickly run this demo. So here we can see it. There we go. And now I'm going to stop that just as fast because I don't want a copyright strike from playing some of the most recognizable music in the world. So ladies and gentlemen, this is Nuno Studios. If you haven't guessed it already, also, this is me running this in a web browser. Yes, this is a browser-based game engine, although you can get a version of it you run locally. Um, it's fully functional. The difference between running in a browser and not running in a browser, is, but especially if you can do a local copy with your own local files, isn't really that different than that bad. You basically can check this out in your browser of choice. Just fire it up. I'll give you the URLs in the linked article down below. And this is one of the sample scenes you can work with. There's all kinds of things built into Nunu. Um, so you can see over here, we can pick a material. You've got uh, material editors. You can set up the various different properties such as opacity and so on. There are definitely some rough edges with this thing. So for example, when I went to do this in a demo earlier on and drop something into the scene, uh, I don't know where that thing ended up. And uh, yeah, uh, the last time I actually did it, so let me try that again. So it might actually be that you just literally, yeah. So there I just broke the grid. No idea why that's happening. No idea why this is going on in performance, but yeah, there are definitely some um, issues at, at, at times in this one, just something to be aware of, but uh, it's got a heck of a lot of potential for sure. So let's move on to the uh, next uh, demo. Uh, here you can see, you see a straightforward scene here. In terms of the uh, project hierarchies themselves, it's actually quite a bit like um, Godot in the way nodes work in that you parent something. So for example, if I want to control this camera in the scene using a script, I create a script object and then apply a camera to it. So you see here, again, this script node owns the camera node. So then if we go into the script, by the way, there is an integrated script editor uh, with somewhat um, code completion. So for example, here I can do um, canon dot, and we'll get uh, some, some suggestions on it. It's not flawless, by the way. Uh, so you may want to use your own external editor for doing code editing, but it does have uh, some syntax. It's got syntax highlighting. It's got real-time errors. Uh, it's just the code completion can be a little bit on the uh, spotty side. But as you can see, basically, um, we can control objects in the scenes. We can do the get objects by scenes, get things by name, or we can actually do things relative to ourselves. So we can do this dot uh, velocity or position and move things accordingly. I'm actually going to go ahead and show you how to do a scene from scratch in just a second. So if you want to go ahead, check out Nunu Studio. It is available at nunustudio.org. Uh, head on over here. Um, you'll see all the demos we just looked at right there. Uh, you can just basically open them up directly. So if for some reason you want to do a Flappy Birds clone, just come on down here, open that in the editor. We looked at this one very quickly, and we looked at this one very quickly. Those open up some demo files for you. So if you want to get you know set and going. In terms of features and functionality, this one is actually built over top of 3JS, a framework I'm really quite a fan of. It uh, uses CodeMirror, uh, NWJS, um, and of course, JavaScript language are kind of the key components to it. Uh, if you want to go ahead and get started yourself, basically just come on here, fire up the web version. Of course, you can download it as well. And here you can see the environment. So for example, let's say we want to do some physics here. We've got a ground object. What I'm going to do is in the scene, I'm going to come over here. These are the physics objects and I'm going to add, all right, come on, a ground scene like so. And then I'm going to parrot my ground to that scene right there. I'm just going to go ahead and make the size a little bit smaller. So 0.1. All right, there we go. So now we have some physics in our scene. We've got a box controller as well. Now what I'm going to do is, again, add another physics object here. So a box type. And I'm going to physics my box geometry to the box controller. And then we can go here, move this guy up like so. And now if I run my scene, boom you have physics. Now in terms of actually controlling things, well, you can come again. Once again, I said it's all worked off parenting. You see here, you've got JavaScript and Python, although I don't know if Python scripting actually works. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a JavaScript here. 
I'm going to go ahead and add my box as a child to the JavaScript. And then we can do it just basically pretty straightforward. Just come on right here in our update code. We could do something like this dot position dot X plus equals 0 0.1. So we're going to move it by 0 0.1 in the X direction every single frame. We'll go ahead and run that. There you see. Uh, it's that simple to add controls. At the same time, uh, you saw earlier on, you can also do it by um, uh, scene.get object by name. And then this could be a little confusing because I have two named box. Um, and then, for example, say it's a physics object, body.velocity.y equals. 25. No idea what that's going to do. I'm, I'm basically taking the physic, the rigid body controller of this guy and setting the velocity on it. Hopefully I didn't do any air. Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. <laughs> we just added a, a whole lot of velocity in that direction. So that is how the coding works. As you can see, again, it is a matter of um, nesting things in a hierarchy. So if I apply a script and I move the script, it moves all of the things attached to the script. By the way, if I move this box object in the scene, I should probably stop my scene so they're back here. If I move this box object in the scene itself, uh, like so, grab the box, what's in the box? And we move it like so, the child moves with it. Whereas if I grab the child and move it separately, oh, I should be able to move it separately. All right, not sure why that did it. Maybe it's smart enough to know. No, it moved them. It just didn't visually update the graphics. So you see uh, parented things, childs can be moved independently of the parent and so on. The other cool thing here is, let's say for example, I have a camera in this scene, which one of these probably, oh, I don't have a camera in the scene. Okay, so let's say I wanna go ahead and add a camera. I can add a perspective camera into the scene like so, and there you can see a preview of that camera. But let's say I wanted to go ahead and make that controllable. So I can just add first person controls in. Sorry about that. So first person controls like so. I can just apply them into my camera, and now I have a standard first-person controllable camera uh, in the scene once it's hooked up. Now, if you're wondering in terms of assets that you can bring in, so let me just go ahead and do a new scene here, clear that out. Um, if you want to bring assets into it, import, you can bring in text, audio, 3D models, bring in a 3D model here. Um, so I can go here to my downloads folder, pick the model I want to bring in, like so, you'll notice it's uh, it's large. So I'm gonna lock the directions here and scale these things down 100 fold. It's pretty common. That's kind of how things work. As you can see, 3D object brought in, no problems at all. Uh, grab the model here. Let's just move her out of this box, right so. Oops, undo. Okay, we do not have undo support via Control Z. All right, there we go. All right, so let me grab the root node here. So there's definitely some, some workability stuff that they can work with here to make things a little bit nicer. But as you can see, you got nice uh, creation brought in. This is a Mixamo animated model on the topic of animation. Let's go on over here and play the animation. And there you can see the end result. So you could bring in 3D objects, no problems at all. This was an FBX project I brought in. Uh, there are, of course, some issues, though. Again, there are, for every strength, there is a bit of a thing you're going to have to work with. Here, for example, if I run it, we get an error that uh, a frame is missing from... I don't know how to fix that one, personally, to be honest. But So just to be aware, it's a really cool project, but there are definitely some areas where they, they need to do a little bit more work. Uh, but there's quite a bit here, and it's working with right now. So you can bring in, again, create a number of different primitives. Generally, you just basically select the primitive. It creates it in the scene, like so. You move it around, easy enough. Um, again, if I wanted to add a script to that, I add a script and then add this object to that script. I want to add physics. All of the physics are available down here. Here you've got various different things such as sprites, particles. Uh, you can bring music in and so on, positional audio. Uh, you got a variety of different light sources um, and you get real-time lighting in this engine. So for example, if I create a point light, like so let's move it and you can see the results of the lighting on the scene in real time as I update it. Let's move it in front of her, like so, so you can see it on the, the chest there, right here. So now I'm gonna go ahead, we can change the intensity of that light. And obviously you can see the results in real time. So it, it's a very interesting project. Again, it is built on top of 3JS, which I am a fan of. Again, it is also open source. Uh, it is under the MIT code license, which is quite cool. Um, 
there's a decent number. So when was the last release on this one? Uh, last release was April 2019. Okay, so they stopped doing <laughs> formal releases, it would seem. Because uh, as you can see, they're still doing updates to the code December the 5th, but they're not doing formal releases anymore. Uh, I guess that makes sense. It does run in the browser. Basically, you clone the code whenever you want and run it locally. So I guess releases aren't really that important on the whole. I've got details of how to go ahead and bring things down. The other nice thing about it is there's decent documentation. So you come up to newnewstudio.org and go to learn. You can get the basics of controlling the editor, creating a camera, creating a script, material editing, using it for augmented or virtual reality, uh, and so on. And also keep in mind that behind the scenes, uh, you have... Um, the uh, 3JS library is there as well. Uh, it does say you can use Python, uh, but I, I, I never, never tested that part out. Um, and it, it seems to be a bit of a second class citizen in that regard. On top of that, there's also a reference uh, documentation for all of the various different uh, classes that are part of it, obviously. So if you want to uh, come in here and learn more about the various different pieces, uh, they are all documented here in the reference as well. So pretty good uh, support on the whole for the new new studio engine. Um, really, it's kind of if you want a 3D game engine that runs in a browser, uh, there's only kind of a couple of players in this space. There is the big two that I could think of are Babylon JS and Play Canvas, both of which are excellent, both of which I've featured on this channel. There's a big update coming to Play Canvas uh, in the next couple of months. I'm going to cover that as well. Uh, but Nunu Studio is kind of in that space. So if you want to work in 3D in browser or um, JavaScript, uh, but you don't want to work at like the 3JS level, uh, this could be a good uh, pick for you because it gives you, again, all the tooling that you would expect of something like a... Uh, a Godot or, or Unity kind of engine for placement and creating your world. Um, so you don't have to work at the code level and then your coding is pretty straightforward just by adding these script nodes into the scenes uh, like so. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Nunu Studio, a free and open sourced 3D game engine for the browser. Let me know what you think, comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.